Hey there, I'm Elizabeth and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things health, beauty, and anti-aging after 40. In today's video, I'm sharing five daily habits that I find work really well for me for keeping sugar cravings to a minimum. And I get it, sugar cravings are real, I have them myself, and I have to pay really close attention to my daily habits and my lifestyle in order to keep my sugar cravings from going out of control. So I wanted to share a little insight around what I have found tends to make my sweet tooth go a little bit nuts and the steps that I take to tame it as much as possible while still finding pleasure in little sweet treats because I do really enjoy sweets. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in or that would be helpful to you, then be sure and stick around to the end of the video and catch all five of my tips. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor or other medical professional. I always suggest that you speak to your physician before you make any changes to your diet or exercise or lifestyle. I'm simply sharing my own experiences and some things that work really well for me. All right, so here we go with tip number one, and this one may be surprising for you because you might think that they're not related, but make sure you're getting plenty of sleep. And here's why. When you're not getting adequate sleep, it affects your body's hormones, including two hormones called ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is the hormone that makes you feel hungry and makes you crave simple sugars. I always like to think of it like I smell someone grilling, so my ghrelin must be high because it's the hormone, again, that makes you hungry and you know how hungry you get when you're smelling somebody cooking. And then leptin is the hormone that helps you to feel full and satisfied. So when you're well rested, your ghrelin levels will decline and your leptin levels will increase. When you're sleep deprived, ghrelin stays high, which means that you're hungrier and it takes more food to satisfy you. And it also can lead to more cravings. Also, when you're sleep deprived, your leptin levels stay low, which causes you to feel insatiable. No amount of food will satisfy you. So this is why good sleep is really tip number one. It's kind of one of the first things we have to think about in terms of weight management and managing cravings. So if you're looking for more information around regulating your sleep schedule and setting up a good bedtime routine, be sure to check out my video, How to Get Good Sleep. All right, so tip number two is to drink plenty of water throughout the day. Some research has shown that it's common to mistake thirst for hunger. So if that's true, then making sure you're getting adequate amounts of water throughout the day may help to control sugar cravings and also help to manage weight. And there are lots of other reasons to stay up on your water intake throughout the day. It helps with skin health, it helps with metabolism, it helps with energy, it assists in healthy digestion and elimination and so much more. So I try to shoot for about half of my body weight in ounces of water every day. So an example would be like a 140 pound person should aim to drink around 70 ounces of water a day. So here's a little tip on how to get a head start for your water intake for the day. I like to drink at least an eight ounce glass of water every morning first thing upon waking before I drink coffee, tea, or anything else. And the reason I like to do that is because, you know, you go all night sleeping without any water intake, so your body wakes up in a dehydrated state. So it's a great habit, a great daily habit to get into to hydrate first off, first thing in the morning when you wake up, and then have your caffeine. Because remember that caffeine may further dehydrate the body, so we wanna make sure that we're getting some hydration in before any caffeine. So for me, I like room temperature water first thing in the morning. I like to get just a big glass and set out my water in the glass the night before, and that way when I wake up in the morning, it's room temperature and it's easier for me to drink. And I love that it's a great way for me to get a good head start on my water intake for the day. Okay, so tip number three is to eat more naturally sweet foods. I like to include plenty of vegetables that are naturally sweet and especially when they're cooked. So for instance, like roasted sweet potatoes, onions, peppers, different squashes, all of those foods are sweet when they're cooked. I mean, think about how like an onion caramelizes when you cook it, as well as plenty of fruits, just to make sure I'm getting plenty of that sweet flavor profile in my diet. And the natural sweetness of these whole foods really seems to help decrease my sugar cravings. So every week I like to roast a few sweet potatoes and keep those on hand in the refrigerator that I'll put in salads or maybe have, you know, with chicken and some vegetables or just as a snack if I'm craving something a little bit sweet. And here's how I cook those. I set my oven on 300 and then I chop up the sweet potatoes into like one inch chunks 
and then I'll spread them out on a baking sheet, which is covered with a piece of parchment paper, and roast them for about maybe 20 minutes, and then I'll toss them around and stick them back in and roast for about another 15 minutes or so until they're fork tender. And then you can just keep them in a covered container in the refrigerator where they'll keep for at least three or four days. They are so good and they really do help a sweet tooth. All right, tip number four is to eat regularly throughout the day. So I have found that for me, eating regularly throughout the day helps to increase my satiety and decrease cravings. Now, intermittent fasting is without a doubt one of the top dieting trends right now. Everybody has probably tried it if they're not already currently doing because everyone is talking about it, but there are some people that it just doesn't seem to work well for. So if you're trying intermittent fasting and it's working really well for you, you feel fantastic and energized, then great, keep doing it. But if you're intermittent fasting and you feel like your cravings might be stronger, then it might be time to consider going back to the more regular eating times throughout the day. So personally for me, what helps with cravings and whatnot and, and regulating my appetite is to have three meals throughout the day. And I like to have, you know, enough to satiate me, but not completely overfill me. So you kind of just have to know what portion size is, um, you know, make how they make you feel. So how much makes you feel too full? How, me, how much makes you feel good and satiated? So, but I like to have those three meals every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then small snacks in between. For my morning snack in between breakfast and lunch, it might even just be like a coconut milk latte or a green tea or something like that, a piece of fruit. But then in the afternoon, I usually like to have something a little bit more su substantial that tides me over until dinner. And I really try to choose snacks that are full of nutrition and not just empty calories. So things like some sort of fiber filled cracker and a string cheese, or I might do a piece of fruit and a small spoonful of nut butter, maybe a small handful of raw nuts and a few dried goji berries or half of a go macro bar if I'm on the go. So that way I'm not just eating empty calories and it really helps to keep my blood sugar stable, which for me helps to minimize cravings and regulate my hunger until the next meal. So if you'd like more information on my favorite quick and healthy afternoon snacks for energy and satiety, then be sure to check out my video. That's all about that if that sounds helpful for you. So tip number five is to enjoy little sweet treats in moderation throughout the week. So if you're able to eat a few bites of dark chocolate without eating the whole bar, that is fantastic because we know that dark chocolate has so many antioxidants and minerals like magnesium, fiber, and even some chemicals that can help to regulate a healthy mood. But of course, we wanna always make sure that we're choosing a minimum of 70% cacao dark chocolate because we know that that is the chocolate that has all of those antioxidants and health benefits that are so good for us. So some of my favorite brands, I love the Hail Mary dark chocolate cups. Um, I can find those usually at Whole Foods or Natural Grocers. I love the Honey Mama's dark chocolate bars. They're, they're just small, a couple of bites, and I get those at Natural Grocers. I also love the JoJo's dark chocolate and they carry those at Costco. And I also love the bars from Theo's and Endangered Species. So I do try to keep it to about an ounce or so of dark chocolate whenever I'm eating it, which is sort of the recommended healthy daily amount that we know helps us reap the most benefit from 70% cacao dark chocolate. Also, if you have trouble with portion control when it comes to dark chocolate, there are a few brands that do individually wrapped squares or little individually wrapped truffles. And some of my favorites are the endangered species individually wrapped squares and then Ultra Eco makes a little individually wrapped truffle. Other healthier sweet treats that I love are one or two medial dates, a small handful of dark chocolate chips, or one of my homemade sweet treats, and I do have quite a few recipes on my website. It's elizabethfinchwellness.com if you wanna go check those out. I've got recipes like my peanut butter chocolate chip oatmeal cookies and my fudge brownie protein bites. All right, that is it. Those are my top daily tips for managing sugar cravings. Again, that's what works well for me and I've tried a lot of different things. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please leave me a comment below and let me know which part was the most helpful or insightful for you. And if you found this information helpful, I would be so grateful if you would consider sharing it with someone maybe on social media who you know loves this kind of information. I'm really working on growing my channel and just providing a lot of helpful content and information for people who are interested in health, beauty, and anti-aging after 40 like me. Also, please be sure to hit like below and subscribe if you love this content and want to see all of the videos that I post. 
As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.